Hello, I'm Dr. Alan Weintraub, Medical Director of the Brain Injury Program at Craig Hospital. Rehabilitation after traumatic brain injury is a complex neurological process. It can be overwhelming to try to understand it all. The goal of this video is to provide you with the tools necessary to ask informed questions and participate in your loved one's care. After a severe brain injury, there's often a period of time when your loved one experiences either a partial or even complete disruption of consciousness. During this period of time, he or she may have lost awareness of not only themselves, but also have lost their purposeful ability to interact in meaningful ways within their environment. You may often hear clinicians use medical terms such as coma, vegetative state, the minimal conscious state, emerging consciousness, post-traumatic amnesia, or even the term post-traumatic confusion. During this video, we are going to closely examine the Rancho Los Amigos levels of cognitive functioning scale, which provides an observational and a much more descriptive way to better monitor your family members' changing condition as they progress through different levels of impaired or even emerging consciousness. A traumatic brain injury, or TBI as it is commonly referred to, causes damage to the brain. Damage to the brain's complex connections causes problems with how a person is able to think and interact with the world around him or her. Following a TBI, there are certain cognitive skills that are no longer functioning in the same capacity. These cognitive skills are consciousness, wakefulness, or awareness, attention, perception or observation, and recognition of information we see, hear, and feel speed at which information is processed, memory, reasoning and problem solving, and the executive processes which include the ability to plan, organize thoughts and activities, and self-evaluation. Cognitive skills build on each other. Here's an example. Let's say you're driving a car. As the driver, you must be aware and pay attention to your surroundings. You must perceive or make sense of what you are doing. If a ball rolls out in front of your car, that means there may be a child present. As the driver, you need to reason or anticipate that a child might run out after the ball. Then you must develop a plan of action, which is to break and watch for the child. Throughout this situation, you must process numerous pieces of information in a sequential order and quickly. The driving example may seem very routine or automatic, but following a traumatic brain injury, these required cognitive skills are no longer functioning in the same capacity. Familiar daily activities are no longer automatic or easy your family member will require help to complete daily activities. During the recovery process, you will see significant changes in how your family member functions in the world around them. Initially, there may be times when your loved one is awake but is not able to interact with you. As he or she progresses in the recovery process, they may be very confused, unable to pay attention, and unaware of where they are and what the date is. As time goes by, you should see improvements. Improvements can occur at a rapid rate, but usually they happen more gradually. The recovery process for traumatic brain injuries typically follows a general pattern. This general pattern of recovery is described in the Rancho Los Amigos Levels of Cognitive Functioning Scale. The scale helps to describe the cognitive changes observed as the brain recovers. In this video, we will describe the 10 levels of the scale and provide examples of individuals functioning at the various levels. It's important to note that each injury is unique and your family member may not match the description of each stage exactly. As your loved one progresses, you may see fluctuations between two levels, especially if they are fatigued. Keep in mind that not all people progress through all of the levels of cognitive functioning. Progress depends on the severity of the injury. Rancho levels 7 through 10. Level 7, automatic and appropriate. Level 8, purposeful and appropriate. Level 9, Purposeful, Appropriate, Standby Assistance on Request. Level 10, Purposeful, Appropriate, Modified, Independent. Your family member has come a long way in their recovery. They may now enter the phase of recovery where cognitive behaviors are identified as appropriate and purposeful, but varied in the amount of assistance required. Rancho Level 7, Automatic, Appropriate, is a key milestone as your family member is experiencing consistent day-to-day -day memory. In the scope of brain recovery, it means that higher brain functioning is improving. Your family member has improved in wakefulness, awareness, perception, attention, 
and memory. It is important to note, however, that while memory is now functional on a day-by-day -day basis, your family member may continue to have limited recall of specific details when information is lengthy and complex. Reasoning and executive functioning skills continue to present challenges. Because pathways in the brain are functioning better, this allows your family member to resume more control of their daily activities. They are able to follow a set schedule and do routine self-care or initiate going to therapy sessions independently. When presented with unfamiliar tasks, your family member may have problems planning and organizing what to do. This is because their executive functioning skills are still impaired. Your family member may have greater difficulty with tasks when in a distracting or stressful situation. While they are functioning fairly independently, they may still need some supervision because of poor safety awareness and judgment. Your family member likely will have trouble understanding how their limitations from the brain injury make it difficult to return to work or live independently at this time. They may be rigid and inflexible in their thinking. It is very important to understand that at this level, your family member may also be showing deficits that are unique to focal injuries or specific areas in the brain that were most injured. These deficits may include in part physical limitations, speaking and communication impairments, poor memory or executive functioning challenges. Often your family member may function well in the hospital setting because of the structure and routine of the daily schedule. However, when they return home and have less routine and consistency in their day, you may see deficits become more evident. Here's an example of someone who is at Rancho Level 7, automatic and appropriate. Do you have any impairments right now or do you feel pretty good? Pretty good. You feel pretty good? What are your goals right now while you're at Craig Hospital? Get out of this place, mm -hmm. get out of this chair, mm -hmm. be normal again. And what has been impacted as a result from your injury? My brain. Your brain. Can you be more specific? My brain, I don't know, it shook. I got baby shaking syndrome is the best way to put it. My brain shook around in my skull. Tell me, do you think you could go to the grocery store right now by yourself? You do? Do you think you could go back to school right now? You do? Okay. Do you think you could drive a car at this point? No. no. Why? What do you think would be difficult? Using my feet. Using your feet because? I don't feel my left side that good. Tell me what each of the following means to you. Look before you leap. Look before you go, like when you're crossing the street, you gotta look both ways and then go. Okay. Tell me what this means. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can take a horse to the water, but you don't know if he'll drink. That's like, like I said, I'm taking my grandpa's horse over to the pond. They wouldn't drink. I would yeah. Just be like mad at them. Yeah. Why aren't you drinking? You're by water. It's hot outside. We're gonna set up a task. I know that you've been a waitress before, mm -hmm. so we're gonna go through a menu ordering task, just like you would on the job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take a look at this menu that we have here, and what you're gonna be asked to do is. Um, take my order and my friend's order. How do you think you'll do on this task with all the things that you'll have to calculate in taking our order? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. All right. Do you think you'll need any help at all? Mm, I might, but... Okay. But you think you feel pretty confident? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll get going. Um, do we need a few minutes, guys, or um, know what we want? I don't think so. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Um, I can't really decide if I want breakfast or lunch. What kinds of breads do you have for the breakfast? What kind of toast? Um, we have white wheat, sourdough. Anything else? Um, probably some rye we could do. Okay. I also see that you have an English muffin on there as yeah. well. Well, I don't know if I'm really feeling breakfast. I think I'm going to go with a Mexican burger. Can I have okay. Swiss cheese instead of the cheddar? Mm -hmm. And the green chili on the side. No onion or tomato. And I'll take ketchup and mustard on that. Okay. Okay. Did you want anything to drink? Uh, sure, actually. I okay, will okay, have... Gotcha. Um, what kind of sodas do you have? Um, we have Coke products. Okay, I'll do a, I'll just do a Coke. Coke? That's okay. fine. Mm -hmm. And those burgers, I don't... How are they cooked? 
Do you guys just do them one way or? Um, we usually do them like medium well. We can okay. do it whatever temp you'd like though. Okay, that sounds good. I'll okay. do a medium. Okay, That's sounds fine. great. And does that come with um, any pickles? Um, it does. But if you don't want pickles, we can do it without. Yeah, I definitely want a pickle. Okay, sounds Thank you. good. You're yep. welcome. I think that's it. Okay, sounds great. Actually, would you mind reading my order back real quick? Because I can be kind of a picky customer. I just want to make sure you got it all. <laughs> um, we have a Mexican burger. And you want it medium. And ketchup and mustard on it. And a Coke to drink. Mm -hmm. Did you catch the cheese? Oh, yep. Okay. I would um, I would like the Swiss cheese Swiss? instead of the cheddar. Okay. And also um, the green chili. Um, I asked if I could please have that on the side. Okay, you got it. Yeah. Okay. And no onion or tomato, please. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. She brought us our check. Okay. Does yours look accurate? I just noticed that I think that she didn't charge me for the dollar substitution for the fruit, so I wanted to ask her about it. Okay. And then I guess I'm wondering why I got added 50 cents for cheese. Um, through our system, we charge for the cheese. I forgot to mention it to you. Sorry about that. Okay. But we do have enough charge on the cheese. Okay, yeah, because it doesn't say that on the menu. Yeah. Because it did We're, come with cheddar, and I just asked for Swiss, so I'm just kind of substituting. I'm not really adding. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we, we can, can take that off? Yeah, we can do okay. that. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. And I, and I think that um, I owe an extra dollar. Okay. I had the fruit instead of the fries. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. All yeah, right. we can go ahead and add that Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's fine. How do you think it went? I think it went okay. Okay. Did you notice anything that was difficult for you? Um, just running through the menu a little bit. Okay. And remembering, like, because there's different charges on different items. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to remember those. And mm hmm So. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to find and locate that information yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Um, what did you think about when Kara was placing her order, the speed that she was giving you her order? Was it hard for you to keep up? Um, a little, but it's nothing that I haven't been used to, so. Okay. What's one thing that she did that helped you determine if there was something that you missed? Um, when she looked at the upcharge. Mm-hmm. That was wrong, so I had to fix that. Mm -hmm. So that helped. And then when she was placing her order, mm -hmm. she also clarified and made you repeat it back to her yeah. just so that you and she both yep. knew that you had gotten her order correct. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. that's harder on big tables. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you feel like it was difficult for you to stay organized when you were taking our order, or did you? No? Okay. Not really. Okay. So you felt pretty organized. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, anything that you felt like was easy for you or things that worked? Um, just writing it down. Okay. When your family member is at Rancho Level 7, it is important to provide guidance and assistance in decision making while still respecting his or her opinions. Encourage ongoing participation in therapy and help your family member understand how far they have progressed. Allow them to do as much as possible on their own while being available for assistance as needed. Encourage them to use their compensatory strategies that have been taught in therapy. Rancho Level 8, Purposeful Appropriate with Standby Assistance. At Rancho Level 8, your family member progressively requires less assistance and may exhibit readiness to explore returning to school, work, or volunteering activities. They may either over or underestimate their abilities. He or she may need assistance or reminders to use compensatory strategies such as a day planner or a cell phone for memory limitations. It is important to remember that while your family member is gaining greater independence, they're continuing to deal with specific cognitive deficits resulting from their individual injury. These deficits may be in areas mentioned earlier, attention, memory, reasoning, 
problem solving and executive functioning. Other behaviors you might be seeing in your family member include low frustration tolerance, irritability, self-centeredness, depression, or fatigue. These behaviors can improve over time. Here's an example of someone who is at Rancho Level 8, purposeful, appropriate, with standby assistance. As a result of that, what, what kind of problems have you had since then? Um, like, basically, uh, what's it called? Uh, like focusing and remembering things and... Uh... So anything else that um, you're, you've noticed other than that, that ability to focus or remember things, other than that everything feels pretty normal to you? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And how do you compensate for those challenges with focusing and memory? I write down this I write down stuff that happened that way I can remember it and I write down you know things that I'm going to do that way I can remember to do it. Okay. And and where do you where do you write things down? Um I have a planner. Okay. In my in the apartment. Okay. That I write stuff down in. Okay. So yeah. you use it all in more written form yeah. versus using like a cell phone or Yeah. or your iPad. Only thing I use the cell phone for is the uh what's it called um you know, reminders for when, when to take my pills. Okay. Yeah. So you manage all of that on your own or? Yeah, I do. Okay, good. Um, so what are the goals that you have in your therapies? Um, get better balance and just get to where I can you know, start going back to school. And what about school? Tell me a little bit more about school and what you want to do. Um, I want to be able to, uh, you know, stay focused in class and you know, get done what I need to be done, what I need to get done, and, you know, just remember, like, the assignments and stuff. As we both know, you're interested in getting back to work. Yep. Right? Hopefully sooner than later. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the um, work that you do. Um, I went to school for collision refinishing, mm -hmm. so that's body work after it's been in a wreck, unless they want to just amp up their car a little more mm -hmm. for the heck of it, and also painting it. I love painting cars. Okay. And then I also did interior work, so trim and upholstery. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly just on the industrial sewing machine. Okay. And redoing the interior. Okay. Um, and so since you, since your traumatic brain injury, tell me if, have you had any fatigue or have you felt very tired? Um, my fatigue was much worse before my cranioplasty. Okay. I think it's because all of the medication that they had me on, mm -hmm. but once I was an outpatient, they cut off every medication, so now I'm not on any medicine, and after they did my cranioplasty and put the bone flap back on, my fatigue is minimal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's extreme after I do something that's pretty extensive, but then before that, it's pretty back to normal. All right, well, Martina, so I'm going to have you take down information from each customer that comes in and speaks with you. Um, since you are um, working in the auto body industry, correct? Yep. Okay. All right, so um, today you're going to have a couple customers that come in and they're going to present some pictures of their cars to you um, and show you the damage. I want you to give them any information that you can provide. Um, that you already know, and then be sure to give them their contact information in order to get back in touch with them. Um, then what I'll have you do is, after the customers come in, I'll have you report back to your supervisor on everything that they shared with you and give your supervisor your, your plan after you do a little bit of research. Okay, sounds good. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Martina. How can I help you? Um, I have pictures of my car. I was in an accident last week. What kind of car is this? It's a 2004 Dodge Neon. Okay. And it's just this one fender bender. Mm -hmm. So this in the door was the only thing that was damaged. Yeah, I did have um, some interior damage too. 
that was previous to the accident, but do you think that they could fix that as well? Yeah, they definitely could. So that's the driver's seat and that's the passenger seat. Okay, and it looks like we'll probably just have to sew up both of the seats. And I will look up how much each part would be for the outside of the car, and then on top of that, the material cost. Okay. And then, to be, what would be a phone number to call you at? 720 um, 431 5132. Okay, sounds good. Um, I also had a few questions too. Um, yeah. The airbags, will they replace the steering wheel or do they just put them back in? How does that work? Yeah, we'll have to replace the airbags, but um, no, the steering wheel's fine. We'll just replace the airbags. Okay. And yeah. then do you, would, do you think you guys have the parts in stock or will you have to order some of them? Um, we will probably have to order the new parts for the car, but we'll have the material in stock. Okay. Yeah. And approximately what would the timeline be for the repairs? Um, we could probably get the car done in a day, if that. And then to re-sew the interior, it's going to be about a week until we get this done. And do you guys usually do a warranty on the work that you did? Um, yeah, we will. Okay. Yeah. Would, and what would that be? I mean, at least up to three months. Three months, okay. Yeah. And will you guys work directly with my insurance, or will I have to contact them? We'll work with your insurance. And we have loan cars that can, you can use in the meantime. Awesome. Yep. And do you think that car should be totaled, or do you think it is fixable? It's fixable. Okay. We're going to have to do something about the alignment also, though, because you can see here that the wheel, the wheel. has okay. popped out. Yeah. Um, so will that increase the timeline on fixing the car? Or will no. That? Okay. Yeah. And do you have a ballpark of how much it would cost, or do you have to wait to see? I have to wait just to see the prices of each. Part. Oh, all the parts. Okay. Okay, Martina, so tell me how you think it went dealing with those customers. I think it went good. Um, I thought more about the car and the damage it had, so before asking their name, which you would do in every situation, mm -hmm. I would ask what car it is first, so I could kind of get on that. Mm -hmm. I didn't look at the main info on who the customer was and their name or their phone number right away. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like you got the names confused then when your supervisor came back in and asked you about them? I believe so, okay. yes. Okay. <laughs> um, what else? What else did you feel like maybe you um, didn't think about in the moment that you wish maybe you had later on or details that you might not have remembered? quite accurately? It was usually when they would ask me how much the estimate would be right up front before I could do my research and also not putting the labor time in. I just said that is without the labor time mm -hmm. because for every shop it's different mm -hmm. how much labor time is. Right, yeah. yeah. And I noticed that you did, you did mention the labor to the person that called you over the phone and then your your third customer, but I don't know that you mentioned it to your first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's important. Um, what about the specific dates that your third customer came in and told you about as far as when she was gonna be on vacation or when she needed you to call her um, at that time that day? Um, I'm pretty sure I said she was gonna leave on 30th, be gone for two weeks, and then I could call her after that and after mm -hmm. four o'clock. Mm -hmm. I know that for yeah. a fact. Yeah. And I noticed you did a good job of, for the most part, taking notes and writing things down. That was one detail that she had told you that she was going to be back on the 30th rather than leaving on the 30th. So that was one thing that I noticed. Otherwise, I thought you, could, you did a nice job of making sure you were taking notes as well as looking up at your customer and getting their information. Yeah. Yeah. 
It was it was a little rocky, but it's good because I need this yep. in case I want to get back to work. Mm -hmm. I need practice. <laughs> yep, and this is where you find out what went well and what you know you want to continue to work on. So. Yep. Anything else? Any positive feedback you have for yourself? It felt good to practice, and I feel like I was pretty online. I just need to focus more on certain details, mm -hmm. which every shop would require. Mm -hmm. As family members, your role is to provide encouragement and support as your family member begins to take on more responsibilities. Allow them to do as much as possible on their own while being available for assistance as needed. Encourage him or her to use their compensatory strategies that have been developed. Getting involved in a support group may be helpful for your family member. Ongoing education about his or her injury is helpful for your family member at this time as they are now ready to learn and benefit from it. Rancho Levels 9 and 10. At Rancho Levels 9 and 10, a person gradually increases their level of independence with the amount of needed supervision and structure decreasing over time. At Rancho Level 9, purposeful, appropriate, standby assistance on request, your family member goes through his or her daily routine while being aware of the need for standby or occasional assistance. Attention progresses from being able to attend to one task with distractions for up to one hour to being able to shift back and forth between different activities to eventually being able to multitask for longer periods of time. He or she is independently initiating and carrying out familiar tasks with assistance when requested. They accurately estimate their abilities, but need standby assistance to help them adjust to a task so that they can complete it accurately. They are now able to think about the consequences to decisions and their actions with assistance when requested. This video will show an example of a person functioning at Rancho Level 9, purposeful, appropriate, standby assistance on request. You started back with kind of a gradual plan. Yeah, after about four hours, there's, there's days when my determination pushes me beyond, and people that have worked around me, or they, they start tapping me, take a nap, yeah, okay. yeah. Because the conversation doesn't stay as crisp, the, the response isn't as crisp or black and white. I was able to handle about three, four hours a day on the first day, mm -hmm. but um, if there was a lot of computer work or a lot of reading or a lot of visual, um, this is the eye that took the, took the brunt okay. with the fracture. So you notice then after a period of like concentrated cognitive effort that you feel the effects of that after maybe four hours or so? Computer monitors are just like driving in a sunny day uh, after staring at all those lights and, and just standard stuff that you see on your computer. Mm -hmm. It just starts throbbing on this side and then can't get the focus and I'm done. So what about any strategies or any um, kind of compensations that you've been able to identify to help you be able to progress through these things? The, the naps help, okay. but uh, I think that's, that's where I have a bad issue with myself. Is, and I'm not this fantastic workaholic, but every time I go and lay down and take a nap, I just feel like I'm a quitter, like I'm too lazy, like why can't you keep working? So I, and if I push myself, then everything shuts down anyway. So there's this battle of be lazy, go lay down. Yeah. Um, and then when I do that, my, my self-evaluation just thinks, what a lazy bum, you're always taking naps. I think that's a key point that, you know, the naps can recharge you um, and really acknowledging that versus knowing that, you know, there's that, that adage of, you know, just push through it, work harder to get stronger. But in the case of a brain injury, do you think that works? No. And that's, uh, I've got a few decades of experience in physical therapy, so, what I've been driven to do for myself and for other patients is you, you overload, you do a little bit more and then the body gets stronger. The brain doesn't. doesn't work. As soon as the brain shuts down, close your eyes and go take a nap. And that's the toughest lesson to learn right now. Yeah, it really impacts everybody. I may be healing at 70 miles an hour and the, my family's still trying to adjust and adapt and heal and they're going 55 miles an hour, so we're, we're just not catching each other. 
By level 10, purposeful, appropriate, modified, independent, your family member is independent with everything within their physical capabilities. However, they may sometimes still require more time to complete an activity than pre-injury. They independently use compensatory strategies as needed. Your family member is able to transition to work, school, or other productive activities, such as volunteer opportunities. In conclusion, we encourage you to learn all that you can about your family member's injury and recovery. We hope that this information has been helpful for you and lays the foundation for further learning. As your family member progresses through their recovery, you are encouraged to continue to ask questions. As you gain a better understanding of what is happening with your family member, you will be able to provide the support that he or she needs. We wish you the very best on this journey. Learn more at craighospital.org.